My name is Lindsay Holliday, and you are in uh, the Laboratory of Behavioral and Genomic Neuroscience, and that's part of NIAAA, or the National Institute on Alcohol Abuse and Alcoholism. Well, I study the brain. Specifically, I study circuitry related to uh, what makes people continue to drink alcohol despite negative outcomes. Uh, neither one of my parents are scientists, but um, at an early age, I think I really grew to like uh, the idea of science and being able to uh, work in a lab code, an exciting lab. But I did take one class, which was a neuroscience class, my first one. And I was able to, uh, within the class itself, conduct studies uh, with a laboratory that was run by the professor that actually studied cocaine and cocaine addiction, uh, which was pretty cool as an undergrad to be able to do that. Um, and just seeing how exciting it was to be in a laboratory and how exciting it is to discover new things every day really turned me on to the idea of being a scientist. Um, on a day-to-day -day basis, I spend most of my time conducting experiments. So I'm in and out of the laboratory doing various things as far as running operant tasks or making chemicals or looking under a microscope. I conduct experiments where I record single cells in the brain to look at what activity can cause one to seek alcohol and what, what we find rewarding. And then I can go back and look at that data and I align the cells with the events that happen and I can see which areas of the brain talk to each other during certain tasks like obtaining an alcohol reward. Um, so what you're looking at here is a, a unit recording I did. So it's a recording of um, an electrode put into the brain and the electrode can pick up signals of single cells. And so each color you see here represents a cell's waveform and what it is is the cell's action potential or when the cell fires. So these individual cells can be aligned later to look at certain events. This yellow cell, for example, um, it might fire when you receive an alcohol reward. So this would be an indication that this area of your brain cares about reward or cares about ethanol preference. Um, so I'm able to look at these different uh, waveforms and determine what the cells are doing in the brain. Yeah, I'm really excited about this job. Um, it's not just one of those jobs where you go through the motions and you just get your paycheck and you're done. Being on a sports team my whole life, I you know, got good at uh, working as a team. I'm able to collaborate with colleagues better and learn from all these other experts that I work with. Um, so I've, I've learned a lot just being in this setting. So it's a great atmosphere. Uh, we all come in and we actually enjoy working with each other. And it's really cool because in science you can make discoveries every day, essentially. I wanted to show you this amygdala cannulation here. Oh yeah, that looks nice. What a part of the amygdala is it? I'm pretty sure that's uh, BLA. What do you think? Uh, looks BLA. looks a little bit lateral though. Yeah, so these were the guys that um, were doing what I told you as far as uh, pressing, lever pressing for alcohol. Oh yeah, cool. What kind of stain is that? It's really nice. It's crystal violet actually. Oh, crystal violet. A lot of the addiction research is focused on drugs like cocaine and heroin, um, which is very important. But there's actually not as much research and as much funding to look at alcohol abuse, which I think is a lot more prevalent in society. Almost everyone I know drinks occasionally, and it can become a problem if you drink too much or if you drink at the wrong time. And it's really important, I think, to understand uh, what causes people to keep drinking even though there's negative consequences. Um, so hopefully in the future, we'll be able to know exactly what parts of the brain may control those actions. When I was in graduate school, um, my lab focused on anxiety. So I was looking at the circuitry controlling um, anxiety behaviors. And then I was able to use the skills that I learned there to transition into alcohol abuse research. Um, so just having the skills um, that you learn along the way help you to decide what field you want to be in. Um, so you're not restricted to just one field that you initially are, are raised in, but you can transfer those skills to, to a number of different topics.